Sarah Kasbar, I'm the CEO of Gemini, and we're co-sponsoring this event with Autism Speaks. And this is the first year that we're sponsoring this event. So it's been, it's got really big really fast. It's very exciting for us. And we're excited to probably make this a yearly event after this. What was your favorite part about deciding to sponsor this event? Um, I think it's just unusual to pair special needs with poker. You know, bringing a, different, a completely different world into our world. So many people already know about Autism Speaks, they know about Gemini, my company, but outside of this autism community, a lot of people don't know it even exists. So it's fabulous to bring other people who don't know anything about special needs and educate them because everybody knows someone affected by autism these days, unfortunately. And so this is a way that you can just spread the word. Do you have a family member or somebody that you're close to with autism? I have twins who are, were diagnosed with autism when they were three, but they've now pretty much overcome the obstacles of autism and they're independent. They went to college and have jobs and you really couldn't even tell that they were on the spectrum now. What was the hardest part about raising them, knowing that they had autism? Uh, the amount, uh, the first you have to be, the ingenuity it took to try to help them because my son didn't respond to therapy so I had to invent a whole new way to teach him. And then just the tremendous amount of hours of dedication it takes, it's really, it's from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. and. You, it, it, for years and years it takes that kind of dedication to be able to pull them out of their own head, pull them out of their inner world. Your Just launched my book today called Embracing the Battle and it's all about our journey that we, how we were able to bring our children out of the dependency of autism, but it also has a lot of secrets for other people that they could use in their community, a lot of tips and tricks, and it has pages and pages of testimonials and video um, and pictures and, and and comments from parents, hundreds of parents who have used the program. You know what, I think I've actually been to Autism Speaks events before. I've definitely been to different autism charity celebrity events. I can't recall if it's Autism Speaks, but uh, any celebrity charity poker tournament that I can come to, play some cards, raise some money for charity, there's nothing better than playing poker for a good cause. How long have you been playing poker for and how are you so good at it? Oh, good question. Um, I've been playing for probably about 10 years, and I just think that there's, when you can channel your feminine instincts and wiles into the game of poker, you know, women are a good read. We have, like, good intuition, and when you can channel that to the poker tables, and guys are a little bit afraid of women at the tables because there's so many men who play, so when you sit down and if you're a pretty girl sitting at the tables, like, guys instantly are like, oh my god, do they have it, do they not have it? You just get a lot of credit when you're a female kind of throwing men off their game, so I just like to think that I've honed all of my feminine instincts and learn how to use that at the poker tables. Do you scare off the guys with your awesome poker skills? Or do they think it's awesome? I would think it was awesome. I, I think that I do. I mean, until maybe they watch me play on TV and then see like what I actually had and realize I'm bluffing them. But um, yeah, I, so far it's, it's worked really well for me. And you're a TV host. What is your uh, show about? Uh, right now, actually, I'm hosting Gardens Poker Night, which is here at the Gardens Casino on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Friday nights. We live stream a uh, live celebrity and high stakes poker action on Tuesdays. It's on CBS Sports Poker Night Live. So I am hosting live celebrity poker games from the Gardens Casino. Uh, well, um, I like it so far. It's fun, um, but uh, I'm, I'm here for the cause, uh, for autism, to raise awareness. Uh, you know, any any form of help and me being a part of it. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad and happy uh, that I was able to be here. Tell us about your medal. Oh well, uh, WBC uh, basically put a target on our head, so uh, anybody can take us out. They'll be able to uh, win this medal from us. That's awesome. How long have you been participating in this sport for? Uh, well, I've been boxing professionally for uh, 16 years. Uh, uh, so I've been professionally boxing, but uh, boxing is part of my life. I've been boxing since I was eight years old. So uh, it's something that I've, that I've done. And I know a lot of boxers that, that give back to their community. And, uh, and, and this is one of the, the causes that, uh, that are close to us. What's been your favorite experience in boxing in your whole life? Uh, I think uh, more than anything, I think the effect that you can have on kids, uh, you know, they really look up to you, the, uh, especially the, the boxing fans and boxing world. And uh, if you're able to give them good advice and uh, have them follow your footsteps, and you know, uh, that, that's something you could do a uh, good change in kids. As far as uh, doing charity events with WBC Cares, it's been about a year and a half. I know 
they do a lot of different events, but I just started getting more involved this year, which I'm really thankful for. How long have you been in boxing for? Oh my goodness, I don't even want to say because then you're going to ask how old I am next. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this marks my 20th year boxing. Um, as a professional, it's been 12 years, so uh, it's been a long time, yeah. I grew, I've, this is my life. <laughs> What's been your favorite part about this sport so far? I would, I would have to say meeting the different people uh, in, in, in and out of boxing because I, it's hard to explain, but boxing has a lot of different characters, whether they're a fighter, manager, trainer, they're all very different. And it's, it, it was very interesting growing up meeting a lot of good people, crazy people, wild people, funny people, but they all, they're all very passionate people. I got to travel the world, go to Europe, Peru, uh, all over Mexico, and uh, across that journey, everyone's been so very respectful because I was defending my title. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like they're just very genuine people. Uh, the boxing world is very interesting. So that's probably my favorite. Part. I would say that's my favorite part. I know it's very random, but I do. I love the dynamic of the fight crowd. You go to a boxing event, you have people, you know, cheering and going crazy for like whoever it is they're there for. You don't really get that at a golf tournament. It's a little bit different dynamic. So that's like one of my favorite things is the people. Yes, my name is Joseph Diaz Jr. I'm a professional fighter with the record of 26 and 0. Is this your first time at an Autism Speaks event? It is my first time, but uh, I'm very excited to be a part of this great event. Uh, I know Autism Awareness is uh, a great cause, so just to be a part of this great event is just a blessing. So I'm uh, happy to be here. How long have you been in this sport for? Uh, I've been in the professional actually for five years, but I've been boxing since I was 11 years old. So it's been 14 years now. Um, I love the sport and uh, I'm pretty good at it. So I'm going to keep doing it until a long time. What's the craziest experience you've had? Um, I would think uh, just uh, traveling everywhere. I, I've been all around the world uh, with the boxing. I've been uh, to London to the Olympic Games. So I think um, in the 2012 Olympic Games, that was probably one of the crazy experience. Just being around the, all the, Olympi the Olympians and just being in that atmosphere, it was a dream come true. What's been your biggest motivation to stay focused? Uh, the biggest motivation for me is to help out my family. I know that uh, with boxing, uh, I can make some good paydays. So I want to just make sure that my family's okay. I want to take care of my mom, take care of my dad, and most of all, take care of my sisters and my nephews and nieces. Is there anything else you would like to share with us? Uh, no, no, I'm actually just going to be fighting for the world title uh, May 19th. It's going to be on Showtime. Uh, it's the biggest fight to date. It's the, mo the moment that I've been waiting for my whole entire life. So make sure you guys tune in May 19th. It's going to be on Showtime. It's going to be a really great card. I'm fighting against the champion Gary Russell Jr. So I'm going to go in there and take his belt. I'm good friends with uh, Dan Marino and his son at Autism. And played uh, many, uh, many golf events helping his cause. Ole Kolzig, a goalie for the Washington Capitals, his son um, Carson Kolzig has, has autism too, so I participated in some events there. But uh, Brian and Laura Kasbar, who started Gemini, an educational platform that helps kids with autism, are, are good friends of my wife and I. And um, So it's great to be out here. I'm a former old football player, Super Bowl 26, and uh, for the Washington Redskins. and. Um, so it's nice to come out here and, and, and give awareness to a great cause, a, a cause that a lot of uh, young kids, young adults and adults are suffering with autism and giving them an opportunity to, to live a, a, a productive life and, and, and make some good things happen in their lives that uh, normally wouldn't be available. How has your football career impacted your life and this company? Well, I've, uh, I have a foundation too. so I've, Obviously, football and the, the great great things we did there and winning Super Bowls and World Championships um, gave me a platform and an opportunity to, to introduce me to some very successful people and people that have helped my, my cause and my foundation, people that are here today that are helping uh, um, uh, Autism Speaks, and uh, also people that uh, one of the things I'm doing now is, is bringing awareness to mental health. and. Uh, with what I'm going through, through through the injuries of, of football and bringing awareness to that and, and, and letting young young people out there um, that are unfortunately taking their lives and knowing that they're not alone in this battle. We're, a lot of us and 20 to, 35, 20 to 25 percent of the people in this room are dealing with some sort of mental health issues and to bring awareness to that and there's so many great causes. I'm just so excited to be a part of this event tonight. I'm a horrible poker player. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting out there and, and uh, 
sharing some light on a very, very, very good cause. Thank you. Is there any last advice you would like to share with young people regarding mental health or just some advice to take home with them? Yeah, you know, I think there's always in the sport, uh, contact sports, of football, hockey or whatever, you got to be able to, one, make the equipment better. Two, you, you don't want to start a, a child out at a, a young, young age, and I'm a, I'm a big component of that. You know, their their brain isn't developed, myelated until they're, you know, in their 20s, and so to to affect that brain with um, contact football and you know, kids six, seven, eight, nine years old, I don't think there's any there's any need for that. I didn't start playing until I was 14, 15, and and even then, you know, you're still at risk. But there are things you can do during practice and cut down the contact and uh, make it a little bit easier. But um, So I know that, that a lot of kids that have played sports, contact sports, that are dealing with mental health issues, and then others that were genetically born into situations where they're dealing with mental health issues. And that the one thing is we can't be silent about it. We've got to be open. We've got to be able to talk about it. And, and in doing so, um, not only bringing awareness, but making sure that they're not silent. They're not uh, isolated. They're not alone because that's when the mind starts working, and that's when, when it works in a bad way, uh, leads to bad things. And so, if we can, if we can somehow get over that and, and help anyone that possible that we can. Um, I think that's 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 a message I want to send. I'm um, actually connected in multiple ways, but as as far as being here, a part of well, really believe in Autism Speaks and having that awareness for people because I think it's just such a great community when you can come together with people who understand. And then Gemini, um, as being a part of, kind of partnering with Gemini um, and being a part of their work, such an amazing organization. And it's really a neat story of tragedy to triumph of someone who wouldn't give up when they received that diagnosis for their, you know, in their family. And it's it has some very devastating results sometimes. And it's, it's really neat to be able to partner with people who are making a difference and seeing what the needs really are and coming up with solutions. So Gemini is one of those solution finding companies I feel and anything that has to do with humanitarian type work and taking care of other people and that kind of thing is you know where my heart is and I'm actually currently working on kind of a global humanitarian platform so all of those kinds of things work for me. <laughs> I've been involved in, in a few relationships with children, uh, girlfriends of, uh, who had children who had autism and kind of um, I've always been besides be fascinated about it obviously drawn to it because I've been around it so much so if possible I always try to come to events that uh, that kind of focus on this topic I actually was the first uh, Mexican heavyweight UFC fighter I fought in Brazil uh, I had seven fights three losses I fought Francisco Bueno I fought Bob Sapp and this is when there was no rules um, so it was the real deal back in 2001 2099-2002. What was your craziest experience? Um, you know what? It, it's it's really really crazy because we weren't wearing gloves. It was bare knuckles. I was fighting in front of 10,000 people in, in Brazil, Recife actually, and then I fought in Panama for Roberto Duran, uh, just not knowing what can happen because uh, like a year ago somebody died in the cage. So that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. What's been your favorite thing out of your whole boxing career? You know what? I actually, I actually started with the fighting, and I became an actor. That's my thing, you know. So I'm, I'm actually they call me the new version of Danny Trejo, Machete too. I'm actually doing a movie with Rob Zombie right now. I just did. A, I was on a Better Call Saul. I was on. Um, I'm working on the spinoff of uh, Mayans MC with Emilio Rivera. So that is what I really love. Tell us a little bit about the movie you're working on with Rob Zombie. Um, I play a bodyguard slash luchador with a mask, a, a black mask, and we're shooting these crazy people, and I get killed, my friend gets killed. It's going to be really big. I think it's the second part of The Devil's Rejects. He's got all kinds of big people. He's the guy they created. Um, uh, number one and number two, Halloween. He wrote the movie Halloween, so he does a lot of scary movies. That's awesome. When is that coming out? Um, right now they're editing, they're finishing um, next week. Um, it looks like the end of December, November, December. This is Ella Kristen signing off from the Gardens Casino. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to follow glamtrical.com and follow us on Instagram.
We'll see you guys next time.